We all love Olympiads on this channel. They are our lifeblood. I would gladly name my firstborn child Yuzuko, okay? But I've been talking a lot about how, right? How to make Yuzuko semifinals. How to code a sweep line algorithm. And how to get absolutely demolished in Pokemon Showdown on not-so-live television. And I've not really talked much about why, right? Why the heck do I do Olympiads? Why the heck should you do Olympiads? And why you gotta be careful when you do Olympiads? Hello everybody, I'm Kara, and today I just wanted to talk a bit more about my experience doing Olympiads, because my experiences are kind of sharded up into these other, like, how to get into this, that, videos on all the Olympiads, but I wanted to put it all in one place just to talk about my experiences and what I think about them. This is one of your guys' suggestions, and I think that this is the kind of thing that a lot of you guys are probably looking for, and I think it'll probably be helpful, okay? I, don't, I have no idea. Alright, so the first thing we are going to talk about is my story, which I'm just going to put it out there, it's not that interesting, okay? I'm just a typical nerd, but we're going to talk about the life of a typical nerd. So the story begins when I was in 5th grade, okay? And I'm not going to lie, I was a pretty popular 5th grader. If you're watching this and you went to my elementary school and you knew me and I wasn't that popular, please don't tell me, okay? This is extremely important to my self-esteem, okay? I have to know that I was an extremely popular 5th grader. Although all remnants of my 5th grade popularity has since then disappeared, I still was popular back then. Literally I was the tallest kid in school and then I get to middle school and then there are like 60 kids who are taller than me. It was so sad. But I'm getting distracted. The point is that I didn't do any math before 5th grade, okay? And in 5th grade, the only math that I started doing was this math olympiad thing. I was decent at it, but then again, math olympiad is probably like the lowest bar you could have for being good at math. Dude, the only thing I remember about math olympiad is that I had to wake up so hecking early. Dude, 5th grade me was such a cool kid. I literally woke up at like 6.30 every Friday to get to this math olympiad thing. Like at the point of comparison, the earliest I wake up now is at 7, okay? So then I went on to 6th grade and I was still not that interested in math, okay? I was decent at it, but I'm not particularly good. I didn't see any reason to pursue math, but my parents were like, you're decent. Why not just take the placement test, see how you do? If you don't get in, it's fine. If you get in, it's fine. So I take the placement test and I get placed in, you guessed it, the lowest possible level that you could possibly be placed in. Which I suppose is better than not being placed at all, but <laughs> I mean, what can I say? And I clearly remember being extremely shook when they explained how to factor quadratics. I literally came home that day and I was like, mom, could you help me factor these quadratics? And my mom showed me how to do it and I'm like, question mark? How did you go from a three term thing to this like random thing with parentheses on it? <laughs> and then I totally just did not understand radicals or square roots or anything. I gotta say, I sucked at math in sixth grade. And then in the middle of sixth grade, my mom's like, hey, you're still in the math club, so why not just sign you up for some AOPS courses? And then I'm like, uh oh. And you know what I said? I said, no, math is for nerds. Why are you signing me up for this? The irony, oh my god. <laughs> Little did I know that I would turn out to be as nerdy as a nerd could be. And literally during these AOPS courses, I literally could not focus. I, I had zero attention span back in sixth grade. But just by like taking these AOPS courses and by like participating in the math club, I just started like learning a little bit of math and things got a lot easier for me. So literally by the end of sixth grade, I was kind of interested in this stuff because solving problems was actually kind of fun now that I actually understood legit math. And I was able to get like a 15 on AMC8, which basically is the minimum you could get to be even allowed to try AMC 10 because the high schoolers didn't want to proctor people who didn't know what they were doing. But my parents were just like, don't take it, that'll just discard you, oops. <laughs> so yeah, still not very good at math, but I was getting a little bit more interested in it. Like, I was really interested in it enough to like, do AOP books on my own during the summer. And then during the summer of 6th grade, I got like, quite a bit better, okay? So I went from being the lowest team to the second highest team. There were like, four teams total, so I basically jumped two levels. So I was still like, pretty bad, okay? Like, literally there were like, 6th graders who were better than me that were in that team and I was like, what's this dude doing? But the thing is, in my particular class, like, the other 7th graders in my grade at that school, not many of us were interested in math, so I didn't really have that much competition. So because of that, in 7th grade, my math skills kind of like flatlined. I mean, of course, like, I learned quite a bit just by being in the math club, but I don't think I improved by that much. But then, in the summer of 7th grade, I went to awesome math, and I just went, blammo, okay? I think I took like geo and number theory and it helped me so heckin' much. And then in eighth grade, I was finally actually kinda good, okay? I was finally like in the top four at the school. And I really, really liked math, okay? I literally thought math was the coolest thing since like StarCraft 2, okay? <laughs> Don't expose me, okay? But I literally played two hours of StarCraft every single day. So literally by eighth grade, I was doing math on my own. I was doing like all the AOP books. I was taking all the classes. I actually had the motivation to do it. But you know what's really heckin' sad that happened that year? I'm top four, right? So I get sent on the math clowns team for our school. And literally, on the state competition, on the team round, I still need one question. The person who checked my answers didn't catch my mistake. 
and we lost by 1.5 points to the first place team in California. Like, it was so sad. A team round question counts as two points. I got it wrong, and now we lost by 1.5 points. God dang it. <laughs> God, ah. It was only a number four on team round. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> But before we get into high school, let me just rewind back to 7th grade. Because in 7th grade, my parents plopped a Java textbook, like this massive Java textbook. They just plopped it on my desk and they were like, Hey, look at this. You might have fun coding. Why don't you try it out? I opened the book, read one page, see a variable, i is equal to 1, and I'm like, no siree, no can do. I'm not doing this nonsense. Coding sucks. And then we jumped to 8th grade. And guess what they do? They give me the Java book again and they're like, come on, another try. Like, both my parents are software engineers, so they probably wanted me to do coding, so, so they give me the book again, right? And I'm like, this is so boring, but I kind of realized in 8th grade that, like, coding is a kind of necessary skill, so I'm like, okay, fine, I'll learn Java, what the heck? So I learned Java, I do a couple of the Yukiko training pages. Wormholes got me stuck so bad, it took me, like, three months to figure out wormholes. But then, eventually, in 8th grade, I got into Silver, but I literally was not interested in CS at all. So now we are ready to transition from 8th grade to 9th grade, and... Between 8th and 9th, I kind of wanted to not be only doing math because the thing is, I didn't really see math as like a practical like thing to do, right? I, I didn't want to do math research when I grew up, right? I'm more interested in math from a problem solving standpoint. I really like like finding the answer to a problem because then it's like you work so hard and then whoa, the answer shows up, you did some really cool stuff, and well, glamour, you get rewarded for it. So since I didn't like CS at all, guess what I decided to do? I was like, if you're not going to be a computer engineer, what other options do you have? That's right, you got to be a doctor. So because that's the only other job that exists in the universe, I decided to get into bio because I, I honestly like bio. And I was like, why not be a doctor if I like bio? So I started studying for use of boat. Basically, I just went through camp. I read literally the whole thing during summer. It was epic. I did a couple of math camps because I still like math, okay? Don't get me wrong. I love math, but I just didn't think it was good to just focus on math. So we get to freshman year. I'm doing a little bit of coding on the side, but my main focuses are bio and math. And I do pretty well in both of them. I got so trolled by math, dude. I got a 139.5 on AMC 10A, and then I got a 5 on Amy, so I got completely trolled. It was so sad. But anyway, but honestly, ninth grade was not that eventful for me. I literally started learning physics. I honestly don't know why. I think, I think honestly, I would be happy if I didn't do physics still, but like, I started doing physics because why not? All the other Olympiad people were doing physics, so like, why not learn physics? Seems cool. And then, end of ninth grade, I literally go to this research camp because I was like, hey, to be a doctor, you gotta do some research, right? So, might as well go to a research camp that costs 10k dollars and literally I go there and I'm like what is this nonsense all I literally did was cut off fruit flies head I probably told this story like 600 times but not fun at all so there goes bio bio is out the window I still did it for science bowl because I thought science bowl was fun I thought bio concepts were totally fine but I just didn't see a reason why I would want to do bio in the future so my options are basically back to engineer I, I literally found CS fine okay I was like okay I'm pretty decent at coding there's nothing wrong with CS why not just try pursuing that. So then we get into 10th grade, my main focus is CS and physics. I did a little bit of math on the side because math is probably the most fun one because my favorite thing about math is the problem solving aspect. The problems don't take like one hour to code up like years ago and they're not like you had to learn like a ton of random stuff like in physics. I already had like a really good background. I really enjoyed math. But also in 10th grade, I started taking these courses, these CS courses, like algorithms courses, and I thought those were the coolest thing in the whole universe. Like Dijkstra's algorithm, like what the heck, that's such a smart way of doing it. Like Proskow's algorithm, that was hecka smart. Dynamic programming, also super smart. I thought it was really cool that you could take like a really hard problem and just like solve it super fast just by finding some clever manipulation or something. So honestly, I think just by doing these algorithm courses and learning a bit more about actual CS and not just like typing Java's code, because Java code is the most boring and yucky thing you could ever see in your life. Even yuckier than a newborn baby. Okay, we probably shouldn't say that. Um, yuckier than... Okay, oh, fine. Yuckier than a peanut butter tomato pickle sandwich. You happy now? And honestly, that's where the interesting stuff ends, okay? In like 11th grade, I still wanted to do well in physics, so I studied quite a bit for physics. Unfortunately, that's the one that got cancelled, god dang it, but... Yeah, that, that, nothing too interesting there. The main reason I focused on Physics Olympiad instead of CS is because I didn't think I could make camp. I still don't think I could have made camp in 11th grade. Maybe if I like started preparing for camp in 9th grade, I might have been able to make it. But like in 9th grade, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. So like, 
I don't know. So essentially, that's how I got into Olympiads, and that's how I found what was interesting to me, right? Like, now I'm, like, actually interested in CS because first I found those algorithm videos, then in the summer of 10th grade, I started taking, like, legit CS courses at Berkeley, which were also super cool. And then this year, I took, like, computer security at Berkeley, which was even heckin' cooler. So we are officially CS boys. All right, so now let's talk about, like, what I actually think about Olympiads in general, right? Like, that's just basically how I got started and how I got better at these Olympiads, but... But the real question is, like, should you do them? Because I think a lot of the times your parents force you to do these Olympiads and that could be kind of problematic if you're not actually interested in them. Like, I got lucky, right? Like, after being forced into this kind of stuff, I actually kind of liked it. So let me just break down, like, the pros and cons of Olympiads, right? So what I think I personally gained, right, is, like, it gives you a very good, solid motivation, right? You have something to aim for, you have a certain curriculum that you know you have to study, and essentially it just gives you a very clear direction, right? You have to look at this problem, you have to get a certain answer, you have to get better at doing these types of problems, you have to read these kind of books, that kind of stuff. And whenever you have really clear goals, I've advocated for this a lot, you're always able to achieve them a lot easier. And you also have to have goals before you can find a way to reach them. So just doing Olympiads also like super improves your time management skills, your studying skills, your ability to just problem solve in general. Like literally I think the one reason why grades are a lot easier for me than they were in like elementary school is because I do Olympiads, right? Like literally all the people I know that do Olympiads don't have that much trouble with their grades. Because if you could study for Olympiads, you're gonna be totally fine studying for your classes. And not even just that, right? You're just getting all these good skills that you could apply to like anything you do. Now another thing I think is worth mentioning is like as a middle schooler, like most middle schoolers don't do anything, okay? I will admit, at the beginning of 6th grade, I did literally zero, okay? The only thing I did was play video games literally all day. It sucked. And even if the thing that you want to do is not Olympiad, you gotta do something, okay? And I think that Olympiad is one of those some things that you could do. And now, of course, the bad side of Olympiad is that if you're forced into it, you might lose a lot of interest and it's not gonna be that fun for you. And a really big reason for this is especially, like, among Asians, right? Like, we're super heckin' competitive about these Olympiads. Because literally all these Olympiads are, are just competing for these awards. And I think everybody realizes the problem with award-centric motivation, right? Because then, if you're like really good at something and you just don't get the award, then you're gonna feel really really bad about yourself. Like, that's the first thing. And also just obsessing over these awards, over like, what you personally think is good, is just bad, right? Because if your only goal in life is to get these awards, like, you're not always gonna get an award for what you do. You should be able to do stuff because you think it's the right thing to do or because you like doing it. Like, literally, I think that people who do Olympiads are the hardest hit by senioritis. Our goal often is not, like, to get better at, like, physics or to get better at math. Our goal is to just get, like, this award. So then when senior year comes around, we're like, oh, wait, this award doesn't count for nothing. So let's just do nothing senior year because these Olympiads are useless now. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I was pretty guilty of this in, like, ninth grade, right? I was like, okay, might as well just do all these Olympiads, see how many awards I could get. I think that was the silliest thing I possibly could have thought of, right? Like, think if awards were the only thing motivating me, I would have given up right after ninth grade, okay? Because looking back on it, the awards don't actually mean anything. What does mean stuff is the time management skills I got, like the problem solving skills I got. Now I'm like able to learn things a lot quicker, right? Now that I know that I'm interested in CS, I could learn all these like CS things way quicker than I would have if I never did Olympia. Like right now, I'm a senior, right? So I have no reason to want to do Olympia. But I still do CS stuff because I think that it's super, super cool. Especially CTS, right? Like. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to achieve an award in them, but I think they're actually super cool, so I've been learning a lot of the stuff. So essentially, in terms of advice, I would recommend you do Olympiad, okay? And I know it's kind of unrealistic to tell you guys don't worry about the awards, because if you do a bunch of work and you don't get re rewarded for it, then it feels like you wasted a ton of time. And I get that. So I think the main thing you got to do if you're doing these Olympiads is, like, find a reason why you like something, right? Like for CS, right? I originally didn't like it at all, but, like... I looked at other areas of it, maybe not just specifically Yusuko stuff, and I found the other areas of it super interesting, right? And if you're able to find this, like, other interest in CS, then you're probably going to be a lot more motivated to do these Olympiads. But the point is, if you're motivating yourself through awards, regardless of what your parents think, okay? Even if your parents want you to do it because of the awards, like, you have to find a different way of motivating yourself. Like, literally the way I do it, is I just think, what is going to make me respect myself more? Like, I really respect the people who are really good at these Olympiads, okay? Like, I really look up to the, like, IOI guys and all that kind of stuff. So, I think I would look up to myself more if I get better at computer science. I really look up to the guys who are able to make these, like, really useful apps that help a ton of people. I really respect people who have, like, good technical knowledge of CS because there's so much to learn and some people are just really good at coding. They can code whatever the heck they want in like two seconds, okay? I really respect that. So I'm just trying to learn all the skills I can to make myself respect myself more, if you get what I mean. All right, that's literally all I got to say. I'm sorry it was not super, super well organized, but essentially the main takeaways are 
you don't have to start super early to be really good. Of course, I like probably started super early for some of you guys, but for my school, I started pretty late. Another thing to keep in mind is that Olympias have a lot of benefits other than just the awards, right? Like, of course, the awards themselves give people motivation. I think that's great as a temporary motivation just to get yourself into some kind of groove, but eventually you'll have to find your own motivation, otherwise you're not going to get anywhere. And then the last thing is just like, if you want to know how I motivate myself, it's basically what do I respect and how could I be more like the people I respect. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. This kind of turned into a rant. <laughs> I didn't really use what I prepared, but thank you guys so much for watching again and see you guys next time.